blockchain is challenging everything in the existing financial industry. In fact, no industry will look at all like it does today, and most companies that we have today will not exist. We're in the early days of some very profound changes that are taking place. And I'm very proud of what we've done at the Blockchain Research Institute to assemble an awesome group of faculty. And we've got a great group of the smartest enterprises in the world that are doing some truly extraordinary uh, things. You're not an audience. You are actually delegates of 40 organizations who've invested in the research that you're hearing from us. We think it's very important for you not just to sit here and be a one-way recipient of information, but to begin to network yourselves, meet the people that are here, your peers, people from other companies, and especially people from around the world. I think it's about learning, and part of what this is today is learning from each other um, and, and getting the benefit of the research that's been done by many people, so I think that's really important. The early days of a big change in the way that we orchestrate capability in society, really, to innovate, to create goods and services, to engage with the rest of the world. Messaging, better messaging, better technology is not the answer to the problem. The problem is solving the liquidity part which you mentioned at the end. And unless you can get a value on the chain, it doesn't solve your most critical problem. You are stuck up trying to figure out whether it's Ripple, whether it's something else, whether it's a security, whether it's a utility. So the regulators need to actually help. Blockchain gives us a unique way to vote, to establish consensus, to reach understanding at a community level. It is your responsibility to make sure that how the blockchain world is regulated is done in a right way, in an appropriate way, in a way that facilitates innovation and technology, allows all of you that are coming up with great ideas to keep doing what you're doing and not get shut down. Getting really good at being able to join these ledgers will be important for the um, governing entities on these ledgers to figure out what is the minimum viable governance that we can have. Those are the ones that I think will grow largest and end up having the net greatest value for their participants. If this is a, a big pipeline that all this data is going to have to come together, I have to sit here right next to somebody who I consider the most fierce competitor with the highest level of respect, and we have to work together to find a way to get a win-win. We think blockchain technology can help take us and, and all of us here to that space. It's not only a tech play, it's a business model change. And the same change that we've been through 20 years ago is now happening here. Bitcoin was the first crypto asset designed to be cash for the internet, a way to move value peer to peer with that intermediary. And what was amazing about Bitcoin is that it worked. And it worked so well that it's set off the spark which is caught on like wildfire and captured the imagination of business leaders in every single industry, including I know a lot of people in this room. We have a consortium that's working on a digital identity solution. They're able to access their digital identity with a trusted source such as the government, a bank, a telco, retrieve that and then send it to a party that they're transacting with. We're of the school that the future is not something to be predicted, it's something to be achieved. This is a, a stake in the ground to government leaders, to business leaders all around the world. Are you doing the right things? Where are you weak? Where are you strong? What are the kinds of things you need to do to invest? And to change your behavior to make sure that you can get all the massive benefits that would flow. If you're not involved, if you're not really looking heavily into this kind of technology, you need to be prepared to be disrupted or to be extinct. It's a mechanism to connect growth, risk capital, to opportunity and a way to do it globally with very little friction and low latency and uh, fewer intermediaries. That's kind of the infrastructure that I see for the new financial system.